Tankers. Together with you, the game passed several test stages of Update 1.13. And now, we're ready to present one of the biggest updates of the year. The list of new features is so extensive that we needed more than one video to tell you about them. Watch a separate video on our channel to learn all the details about the rebalancing of high-explosive shells and changes to artillery, which are a significant part of this update. You can also find out more about the launch of Battle Pass Season 5 on our portal and from a separate video. In this review, we'll tell you about the rebalancing of premium and event vehicles, the new game mode, and improvements to the interface and maps. But first, let's talk about the changes to Ranked Battles. The new season of Ranked Battles starts on June 28th. It will be held in an experimental 10v10 format. This will increase the competitiveness and influence of each player on the battle outcome. The progression will be changed according to the new format. You will need fewer chevrons to get to leagues than before. Their distribution will also be adjusted. The season is separate from the annual Ranked Battles 2021 to 2022 cycle and annual rewards, but it will feature its own rewards, including new equipment. The role experience system has been improved. Now the names of each role are clearer. Also, one new role has been added, while the role actions of vehicles now better suit their characteristics. These changes will be introduced for one season. Depending on your feedback, they'll remain for future seasons. You can select ranked battles in the mode selector window, which has also been updated. The interface for selecting game modes has become more spacious and much more informative. Now you can find out everything you want about a particular mode, learn its rules, and view its rewards. The Show Progression button will display your successes. For example, your division in ranked battles or battle pass level. The mode windows are divided by size. Standard and permanent modes are on the right side. To their left are random battles as well as popular and temporary modes that can be of interest, modes such as Recon Mission. The new Recon Mission mode lets players take part in testing new game maps that are still in development. Battles in this mode are counted towards player statistics and are fought in Tier 8 to 10 vehicles under standard battle rules. In this mode, you can earn Battle Pass points and complete all missions except campaigns. After you've fought 20 battles on the three maps available, you will be able to choose the map you like the most. And after you've played six battles on a particular map, you will be able to take a survey and share your detailed feedback. Playing in this mode will bring you rewards, the value of which depends on your activity. Recon Mission will feature only new maps, not old ones such as Minsk. Summer in Minsk gave way to early fall. The visibility on the map has improved. It has become more free both visually and gameplay-wise. The red line on the right flank shifted farther from the obelisk, which opens new routes for heavy tanks. The construction of the subway with numerous objects and a big pit is underway on the left flank. This will make the map center busier. The number of objects on the central street was reduced. Now it's easier to actively scout and fire from there. The river no longer divides the map into two clear parts. Its bed is now a new space for maneuvers and switching flanks. The environmental sounds on the map were also reworked to sound more natural. The gameplay will now become more enjoyable, not only on Minsk, but also on other maps thanks to interface improvements. We continue to add popular mods that will help you navigate even in the most heated battle. Now players can look at the battle from another angle. To do so, they have the Commander Camera. It allows them to zoom out from the tank farther to monitor the situation on the flank. And if you need to have a broader view of the battlefield, 
You can activate tactical view by continuing to zoom out the camera. It lets you better coordinate the actions of allies on a bigger territory, track the movements of invisible enemies via broken objects, or just admire the view. These two camera modes are complementary and provide different tactical information. That's why if you don't need one of the modes, you can turn it off via the general tab in the settings menu. Players can now assess the situation with the help of hit points in the team panels and on the minimap, which allows them to monitor the durability of enemy vehicles during battle and look for openings in their defense. You can display hit points by pressing Alt, but you can make it permanent or turn it off completely in the general tab. With these mods, players will better feel the flow of battle and keep it under control. To make gameplay not only more enjoyable, but also balanced, we are continuing to adjust vehicle characteristics. Vehicle rebalancing in particular touched on two Tier 10 tanks that you can get for events on the global map or in the Bond store. The M60 and 121B gained some turret armor, which makes them stronger in positional skirmishes with same-tier medium tanks. The Chinese 121B now also has a stronger upper glacis plate, reloads faster, and moves noticeably quicker. There are more changes to Tier 8 vehicles. The Chieftain T95 will take its rightful place in battles after some tweaks. Its gun stabilization, reload time, engine power, and view range were improved. This will bring the Brit to the state of a comfortable medium tank. But not only medium tanks were buffed. The Super Heavy KV-4 Kreslovsky now has better survivability due to more hit points, reinforced weak points in the turret, improved engine power, and higher maximum speed. A game veteran, the IS-5, received better gun stabilization and 7 degrees of gun depression. This will make it more convenient when using the terrain. One Tier 7 tank was fine-tuned as well. The T-23E3 now has better gun stabilization, enabling it to stop before shooting less often. In addition to clan vehicles, changes were also made to premium vehicles. The Chinese M41D light tank had its view range and top speed improved. Now it can scout more aggressively. The British FV-1066 Senlac received a better view range and improved gun accuracy for its counter-scouting role. Its American counterpart, the T-92, now has better armor penetration with standard and special shells. One tank destroyer was also tweaked. The ISU-130 received a more powerful engine and an expanded field of fire due to wider gun traverse limits. Also, its armor penetration and shell velocity were improved to make firing from a distance more enjoyable. These vehicles won't be overpowered. These changes just make them more up-to-date and competitive. By the way, you can research other vehicles using the new way of creating blueprints. The game now features a new opportunity for creating vehicle blueprints using not only the blueprint fragments of the selected nation, but also its allies from the Second Front Mission campaign. The fragments of allied nations are used at the rate of 1 to 6. This way, you can use blueprint fragments of nations that you researched completely or don't plan to research at all. Research vehicles with the help of blueprints, lead your team to victory in updated vehicles, and take part in recon mission to decide the future of new maps. And watch a separate video on our channel to learn more about the changes to the mechanics of artillery and high-explosive shells. Good luck on the battlefield.